Hey friends, it's Jess with Virtually Visual. Uh, today we have a really fun tutorial. We're gonna be diving into these flower pillows that you see here on screen. Uh, this is just a random personal idea that I had uh, and put on my Behance. But yeah, we're gonna be recreating that um, and it should be pretty fun. Okay, so starting things off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to pull in a torus shape. So I pulled one in, I'm going to switch this to positive Z axis and I'm just gonna pull this up. Um, and then let's get this kind of front facing. So I'm going to up my segments. I'm going to do, we'll do 100, 180. We'll see if we can handle this. If not, we can take it down. But once we have the shape that we like, let's hit C to make it editable. And then we're gonna go right into our edge mode and use the loop tool to select um, some different areas. So I am first going to make a selection in the middle here. And then I'm also going to try to make some symmetrical selections along the, um, the torus itself. So I wanna kind of divide this into chunks. So I'm gonna go like this. So something like this, um, you've got a line in the middle and then we've got our lines kind of breaking this torus into several pretty much equal chunks. Um, let's go to select and then store selection. First thing I'm going to do is right click on our torus, go to simulation and add a balloon tag because I know that the majority of this shape is gonna be driven by the balloon tag. And I am then going to right click on the torus again and go to other tags, vertex map. So nothing should really be yellow in there uh, yet. Let's hit on our vertex map icon, hit use transfer in the checkbox and we can delete our freeze. We don't need that but let's drag our edge selection in here. So now when we select our vertex map again, you should see white where, or yellow, excuse me, where our lines have been selected. So now we know that we can use this vertex map um, in different spots in the balloon tag, and we're going to see the shape affected uh, when it inflates. Let's go to our balloon tag. Let's change a few things first in the surface area. I do want this to be pretty bendy, so I'm gonna do 300 just to start and 10 for the stretchiness. I'm also going to take the thickness down to maybe 0.5. And target length, let's set this to 120, but let's open this little drop down here because we're gonna use that vertex map as a um, controller of this target length. Then let's go to our balloon and let's change this to three to start. We'll just play there and also drag our vertex map in the map section. And then finally, let's go to mix animation. I think let's try pins and let's drag our vertex map in here. So I'm going to set this somewhere around 45 or 50 just to start. And then finally, because we don't want our torus to just fall, let's hit Control and D and let's go into simulation scene and let's turn off our gravity. So we've done a lot of changes. Let's just see where we're at right now. Okay. Now that's not what we want. And I think what happened here is our vertex map actually needs to be inverted. So that's simple. Click on your vertex map, go to the clamp section, hold down, and you should be able to click this invert. So let's try that again. Let's go to the start, hit play. There we go. So that's what we wanted to see happen. So sometimes if you're seeing that funkiness, it could just be an issue of you need to invert your vertex map. That's a super quick and easy thing. Um, I'm really liking how this is looking. So you could render it there and say, I like how that looks, or you know, you could play with some settings. You could repeat the process and up your um, segments or even just throw this into a, uh, sub or a, a subdivision surface. If you wanted to use this, say, in a simulation where they weren't inflating, but they were already kind of blown up like this, you could right click on your torus. Actually, let's go back to the object mode though right click on your torus and you could go current state to object and then just delete the balloon tag from that. So then if we hide our original, you have this shape now that you could work with and you could even throw this into um, a soft body tag. So that will then keep the folds and the, um, the edges that we have made um, and keep the inflation, but you can still kind of throw this new shape into a simulation. Just know that that's the essential of how you do these really cool flower pillows is uh, making those edge selections, using that to drive the vertex map, which then gets plugged into the balloon tag um, and controls what gets inflated and what doesn't. So really straightforward, pretty beginner friendly too. 
So I hope you enjoy. I am going to actually delete my ballooned Taurus, or I may just delete the balloon tag because I don't want that to kind of interfere with our um, scene building or any weird collisions or anything. And I'm going to change the name of our edited Taurus to Flower Pillow. And then I am going to zoom out here and I am just going to control and drag some copies. Let's also get a camera set up while we're here so we can kind of reference this. Um, I'm going to set the focal length to 120. I always like to do 120 or 80, something around there. And I'm also going to change our aspect ratio. Let's do something like 2000 by 2200. And let's change our resolution to, let's do 120. I like 300, but let's do 120 just so it's a little bit easier on the render viewer. And then let's go into Redshift Advanced Settings, and I'm going to change my threshold to 0.1, Gauss to Lanxos 6 for the filter size. I'm going to turn off denoising if it's on, but it's not, so we're good. And then in Global Illumination, I'm going to keep this at a Radiance Point Cloud. I've been using that lately, and it tends to be faster than Brute Force and not much different. And then in system, I'm going to change my bucket size to 256 and my memory to 60. So we've got our settings here. Now we can kind of properly set up our camera. So I like this. Let me just keep dragging some more clones around the scene. Okay, once I've got a handful of these clones in here, let me first throw all of these into a null so we have a little bit of organization. And then I'm going to go through and individually size these so they're a bit more uh, unique. I'm also going to rotate these. And then I'll make a few more copies. Okay, so I think I got enough flower pillows here. Uh, now I think let's just rename our null. Pillows. Okay. And then we will be able to throw some materials onto this whole group so we don't have to worry about anything else. Um, let's get a dome light in here and pull up our render view. So I'm gonna go in here at our dome light. And I believe I chose one in my scene that was kind of an overhead light. So something like this one, um, let's try that. And then I'm going to also hide our work plane because we don't want that in the way. And let's open our render view. Hit play. Cool. So yeah, this is pretty similar to what I had set up before. Um, it's looking very fun. Uh, okay, so let's get started on materials because that's what you guys want to see. That's the fun part. That's at least one of my favorite parts. We're going to create a standard material and throw that onto our flower pillows. And let's open the node editor and drag that to the left. And I'm going to pull open a bump map, drag that kind of into place, and connect that. And then I'm going to open the tiles node and I'm going to plug that in here as well. And then I'm also going to change the colors to be all white. So we get this kind of grid and let's change squares. You can choose any one of these. For a lot of fabric, I do weave, but it's been fun lately to do things like hexagon or circles. I think I did circles um, in mine. And then you can see that this pattern right now is really big. So let's take the scale down. Let's try 0.1. That may be about right or 0 0.01. Mm, it might be too small. Let's try 0 0.05. And then let's undo that. So yeah, I think that looks pretty close. So that kind of handles the texture itself. For the actual color of all these flower pillows, you're just gonna need a max end noise plugged into a ramp. And we're gonna plug that into the color section. And that's kind of interesting. Um, you could also just make this much bigger. Let's change the scale to 500, see what we're getting. Okay, maybe 800. All right, let's try that. And then I had three colors for the actual ramp. I think I had a purple and some kind of red. And then a white, whoops. 
and I made sure I cranked these up. I may have even put a white between the purple and the red. So something like that. And this may have even been a kind of green, greeny blue maybe. Yeah, maybe something like that. Maybe we had this over here. So yeah, something along these lines and just play around with these colors. That's not showing our bump map anymore. Let's just try refreshing. There we go. Um, okay, so I like that. You could also just literally play around. Let me save this preset. We'll call it purple, green, red. So we have it. You could also just honestly try a lot of the presets. They've even added a couple new ones at least. Um, I don't always like how vibrant these are. They're pretty intense. But what you could do is throw this into a color correct and just take the saturation down a bit. Something a little bit more pastel is kind of fun. So yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Um, and then if you really wanted, something else that I played around with was throwing this into a color layer as the base and adding, make sure you turn off the layer one for right now, and using the flakes shader to add some spots. So I'm gonna plug in the um, outflakes ID, I believe it is, into the mask. And then if we enable layer two, we're gonna get some polka dots. So you might have to refresh. And then let's actually solo this so we can see. So our dots are really small right now. Let's also change Voronoi to dots because it's Voronoi by default. And let's increase the scale maybe to 10. Okay, and let's take down the density a lot. Okay, maybe even five for the scale. And then let's unsolo that. So now we're getting these cool polka dots. I'm going to change the color. Um, and maybe I will take the scale actually back up to 10. I kind of like that. But you could add multiple layers of this. Um, I'm gonna add same kind of thing to layer two, but just change the seed. Oops. And then let's enable layer two and choose a color. Actually, I kind of want something purpley. Cool, so we got some polka dots there, but let's also take the scale up on maybe three. So yeah, they're smaller, but just adds a little something. So I think that's kind of interesting. And again, we can go in with our ramp and we can change this at any time. Um, you can play around, really try out some different colors. Let's see here. Scheme seven's always fun. I also like flame five. I like that, that's kind of soft and nice. So yeah, let's just say that we kind of liked something like this and maybe we want to take our saturation back up a little. Um, so if that's the case, then let's move on to the actual camera focus effects and our backdrop. I'm gonna enable our backdrop and uh, it's pretty small because our scale for this scene is quite huge. Um, let's take that scale way up. And then let's take this back and let's take the height of this up. So we should be covering our scene now. I don't think I used a backdrop in my actual render, but it's kind of nice here in this case. And let's just create a material for the backdrop. Let's go in here. And the only thing I'm really gonna do is pull in a ramp and I'm gonna use this to drive the color. So I'm gonna solo our ramp here and I'm gonna select, um, I think it's radial. No, sorry, it's circular. And I wanna make sure I can see where this is at. Um, okay, so if the center of it is kind of off to the side, I'm just gonna click on the material here and use the offset options to kind of move it into place. Yeah, something around there. So perfect. And then I'm going to unsolo this, but let's change the colors here. Let's try something kind of warm. 
and then maybe we'll do another kind of blue or green tone for the lighter part and I'm gonna take this down so okay let's say we're happy with the ramp and the backdrop I'm not liking these harsh shadows on the bottom and in my actual render I did add a light to the bottom of all the flower pillows so let's pull in an area light let's change this to the face upwards by rotating 90 degrees and let's increase the scale here um, then I'm going to take the spread down and the intensity way down let's do maybe that and I don't think I actually had it right under I might have rotated this whoops rotated along the y-axis and maybe a little bit this way let's see here let's take the intensity down again because it's still too intense maybe we just need to make this a little smaller okay and then i'm going to change the color here i'm going to try something a little bit more purpley or blue toned okay and then i'm just going to play around with the placement of the light I may even change the shape of this to a disc so we are working with more of a circular shape cool so let's disable it and then we'll re-enable it so we can just see the difference if it's still too intense you can obviously keep taking the intensity down um, let's try 0 0.07 maybe or even interesting it changes a lot between oh maybe not Let's try 0.5 or 0.3. Okay, I like that. I think that's soft enough. And let me play a little bit with the colors of our backdrop because I think that's a little bit distracting right now, actually. The red is a little intense. So I like that. I think those colors are really, really fun. So now the last thing that's left to do is just play with the focus. So I'm gonna hit N, A on our keyboard. And I'm going to go into the optical tab of our Redshift camera, make sure bokeh is enabled. And then aperture, let's take this down to 1.8 maybe. Something that would be an actual camera. And let's use the focus selection option to choose where we want to focus. Um, and I even might take this aperture down to one, which is a little unrealistic, but I really want to emphasize that focus. So I'm really liking that. Oh, and I forgot, we also want to throw a redshift tag onto all of our objects and turn on the tessellation so that we just get some smoothed edges there. So yeah, that's really it, folks. Um, I'm going to render this one out. I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See ya.